Now, the challenge with uh, public health and community health is, despite this awareness creation, it almost feels as though when you go into the communities and hinterland areas, they lack access to proper hygiene facilities, proper portable water, and they are the most susceptible when it comes to issues of diseases like cholera. Uh, what's your call on the government and well-meaning individuals to intensify investments in WASH projects? I agree with you totally. And um, the, you cannot over, over is the, we cannot actually express with the body into cholera. So there are need for access to safe, clean and portable water cannot be overemphasized. And you know, effective hygiene practices. And also if there are also some appropriate technologies like using of a, a bucket with a tap, you know, to ensure that something like running water can be available for hand washing. You know. And we call on governments to actually expedite actions to provide portable water to our communities, both in the urban and rural areas. Because you must in the rural areas, but even in the urban areas, we have urban slums. We have places that don't have adequate water and sanitation. So the entire population should be covered with clean, safe, and portable water. And then also to have proper um, facilities to do a lot of hand washing. Hand washing is straightforward. If we had time, I would demonstrate the steps. Because hand washing alone can actually reduce the burden of cholera and all other um, diseases that are transmitted from the hands and water pectoral diseases by between 50 to 80 percent. So hand is very critical, ensuring that there is safe disposal of feces as well, so that there is no open defecation. With that too, we have less of the microbes that can be transmitted. And governments, a lot of risk communication, advocacy, talking to groups and communities, and also providing these facilities that will help to improve hygiene and sanitation practices. And and it almost feels as though Nigeria is continuing to grapple with eradicating open defecation. As a people, people always ask if we can imbibe the culture of not defecating into water bodies or even at, at the barest minimum, have pit toilets in certain communities, but some community dwellers, especially along riverine areas, are in the habit of open defecation, which many people call open ballot or whatnot. You are right. And you know, um, behavioral change communication is something that takes a while. And we need to communicate and still actually emphasize that communication to our communities and our people. Because it's actually the people that will actually decide and say enough of open defecation providing latrines, either pit latrines, um, ventilated improved pit latrines, or other more sophisticated methods of sewage disposal. And when the people actually take it, then a lot of um, support from the communities, the structures, and also from the government to ensure that this issue of open defecation or um, CR4, that um, defecating into water bodies is also a thing of the past. We can do it. A lot of community efforts and, you know, um, support by the government. And also, when that also goes with also um, some form of enforcement by the reg um, regulatory bodies, that will also go a long way as well. Well, as we look to wrap up this conversation, I'd just like to once again get your call on Nigerians, especially caregivers, family members, especially for persons who have some of the symptoms that could be suspected to be manifestations of cholera on the call to action, what they need to do when such symptoms are observed. Thank you so much. So once we have profuse diarrhea, um, within, um, nausea or um, fever with or without, we encourage everybody who is affected or by their caregivers to please rush to the nearest health facility to get optimal care also to maintain all the ways that we can actually prevent because prevention is key 
Remember that about 80% of those who are infected may not have symptoms. So the burden is high that everybody needs to actually participate in the prevention. Ensure that we wash our hands properly at every opportunity on that running water or use an alcohol-based hand rub using the 10 steps of hand washing to actually clean our hands. And then those who are handling food, ensure that those who are schooling or have any form of this symptoms do not cook or handle food for others. We ensure that we don't contaminate water, ensure our water is clean. And we boil this water before drinking so that we're sure that all contaminants, especially because of cholera, is not within the water. And then also um, sanitation, um, hygiene, very, very key to ensure that we have a cholera free free environment. Thank you. Well, I must thank you, Doctor, for making our time to grace the show this morning and wishing you the best of the long holiday ahead. Have a nice day. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that was uh, Dr. Tekabito joining in from the Benry State University Teaching Hospital of the Department of Epidemiology and Community Health. And having looked at the development